Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in our series looking at the psychology AQA A-level exam. In today's video we'll be looking at agentic state and legitimacy of authority as a part of paper one in social influence. This relates back to previous videos done on Milgram. So if you haven't watched those or if you're unfamiliar with that content, I recommend going back to that first and then continuing with this video. So first we'll look at agentic state. When an individual carries out the orders of an authority figure and acts as their agent with little personal responsibility, they are in an agentic state. But when an individual is in this state, they feel massive amounts of anxiety when they realise what they're doing is wrong, but they feel powerless to disobey. For example, in Milgram's experiment, the participant was told that the experimenter had full responsibility and so acted as an agent on behalf of that experimenter. And the ability to enter an agentic state increases the level of confidence as the level of personal responsibility decreases. So in essence, when an individual is in an agentic state, they feel like the decisions they're making are not of their own accord, that they are acting on behalf of an authority figure and therefore leaving them feeling little personal responsibility. The opposite of the agentic state is the autonomous state. And this is then when you behave according to your own principles and feel a sense of responsibility for your actions because you know that you are the one in charge of them. When you go from an agentic state to an autonomous state or vice versa, it is called the agentic shift. And Milgram says this occurs when a person perceives someone else as a figure of authority and this other person has greater power because of their position in a social hierarchy. Evidence for this comes from a variation of Milgram where an additional confederate administered the electric shock on behalf of the teacher. And remember the teacher, Milgram's experiment, is the naive participant. The percentage of obedience in administering the full level of the electric shocks, which was at 450 volts, increased from 65% to 92.5% highlighting the power of shifting responsibility and how when you are in an agentic state or you don't feel personally responsible for your actions, you are much more likely to obey an instruction and in this case cause harm to another individual. And then we move on to something called binding factors. And binding factors are aspects of this situation that allow the person to ignore or minimise the damaging effect of their behaviour and thus reduce the moral strain that they feel. And Milgram suggested a number of strategies that the individual uses, such as shifting responsibility to the victim or denying the damage that they were doing. So these binding factors allow someone to fully integrate in the agentic state and helps decrease that level of personal responsibility because they do not feel blame for their actions. They have shifted that away from themselves and onto a different aspect of the situation. So this is all the core knowledge that you need to know for agentic state. Then we move on to legitimacy of authority. Most societies are structured in a hierarchical way. People in certain positions hold authority over the rest of us, like parents, teachers, police officers, nightclub bouncers, etc. The authority they wield is legitimate in the sense that it is agreed by society, as most of us accept that authority figures have to be allowed to exercise social power over others to allow society to function smoothly. So, a police officer is in a position of legitimate authority because we accept that they can protect us, keep us safe and convict those or be a part of the process in convicting those who mean to cause us harm. 
one of the consequences of this legitimacy of authority is that some people are granted power to punish others. Most of us accept that the police and courts have the power to punish wrongdoers, so we are willing to give up some of our independence and to hand control of our behaviour to people we trust to exercise their authority appropriately. We learn acceptance of legitimate authority from childhood, from parents initially, then teachers and adults generally. But this authority can be destructive. And history has often shown that charismatic and powerful leaders can use their legitimate powers for destructive purposes, ordering people to behave in ways that are callous, cruel and dangerous. And destructive authority was very clearly on show in Milgram's study when the experimenter used prods to order participants to behave in ways that went against their consciences. A real life example of this could be any dictator in history, in essence, such as Hitler. He was put in a position of power that the majority of people in society accept was legitimate. So then when rules and discrimination and everything that happened during Hitler's reign did happen, that is a very, very good example to use for destructive authority because the authority that he had was used to destroy the people. But because he had legitimacy of authority with the way that people were raised to believe that the leader of your country has authority over you and we accept that it led or at least contributed to the catastrophic events that occurred during Hitler's reign. So next we will look at an example study looking at legitimacy of authority that isn't Milgram and a very key study that you need to be aware of comes from Hoffing et al in 1966, who wanted to create a more realistic study of obedience than Milgram's by carrying out field studies on nurses who were unaware that they were involved in the experiment. The procedure. Nurses were given orders from an unknown doctor over the telephone to administer a dose of an unknown medication above the maximum allowed. The medication was not real, though the nurses thought that it was. 21 out of 22 nurses obeyed without hesitation. When other nurses were asked what they would do in a similar situation, 21 out of 22 said that they would not comply with the order. So we can see that the authority that the doctor had over the nurses was seen to be legitimate. So they carried out their orders, perhaps going against any internal feelings of, is this right does this make sense that was basically overridden because of the legitimate authority that this doctor had over the nurses i've got a couple of evaluation points for this study you do not need to know them however it would be very useful if you try to revise them because when it comes to your evaluations if you wanted to bring this in it's very important to criticize these studies to show the marker your in-depth knowledge and gain those higher marks. So one evaluation can be how it is criticised on ethical grounds as the nurses were not aware that they were in a psychological study and could have felt threatened by their results and implications. Secondly, it is hard to replicate as it was a field study and other studies didn't obtain similar results. For example, Rank and Jacobson in 1977 replicated the study, but the doctor told the nurses to use Valium, so a well-known drug, at three times the recommended level and gave the name of a real doctor over the phone and the nurses were able to communicate. Only two out of 18 nurses prepared the medication, so it means that Hoffling's study can only be applied to that hospital under those specific circumstances meaning that it has low ecological validity. If you're unaware about ecological validity, it is 
in essence, how well it can be generalised to other environments. So if it has low ecological validity, it means that it has little generalisability. That is all the AO1 content that you need to know for legitimacy of authority in a genetic state. So now we'll move on to the evaluations that I have written. You do not need to use these if you do not want to. The option is there for you to revise them as if they are, they are your own. The first evaluation is a limitation of the agentic shift, is that it's a limited explanation, as it doesn't explain many of the research findings. For example, it does not explain why some of the participants didn't obey. Humans are social animals and involved in social hierarchies, and therefore we should all obey. And it doesn't explain the findings from Hofling's study because the nurses didn't feel any anxiety in carrying out the orders, unlike Milgram's participants. This is a limitation as it shows that the agentic shift can only account for some situations of obedience, but not all of them. Secondly, this is quite a chunky evaluation, so if you want to revise this, cut it down in whatever way you can, but I just wanted to give you guys as much detail as I could to deepen your understanding but it is completely up to you what you choose to use in your evaluations. So the second one is a strength of the legitimacy of authority explanation is that it is a useful account of cultural differences in obedience. Many studies show that countries differ in the degree to which people are traditionally obedient to authority. For example, Killam Mann in 1974 replicated Milgram's procedure in Australia and found that only 16% of their participants went to the top of the voltage scale. On the other hand, Mantel in 1971 found 85% of German participants went to the top of the voltage scale. So this shows that in some cultures, authority is more likely to be accepted as legitimate and entitled to demand obedience from individuals. And this reflects the ways that different societies are structured and how children are raised to perceive authority figures. Furthermore, this ensures that the theory is an ethnocentric and only based on Western ideals that have been generalised. This matters because such supportive findings from cross-cultural research increases the validity of the explanation. If you're unfamiliar with the term ethnocentrism and you are in year 13 that is wanting to achieve an A or an A star, you 100% need to know this term. You learn about it in your issues and debates topic, however, it would crop up as you go along the course. But if you are in year 12 or you are not aiming for an A or an A star, then you don't need to worry about it. But ethnocentrism is, in essence, when we try and push Western ideals or findings or facts onto non-Western societies without actually studying it properly or testing it in different cultures. So this matters because such supportive findings from cross-cultural research increases the validity of the explanation. Then finally, another strength of the legitimate authority explanation is that there is research support. Blash and Smith in 2001 showed a film of Milgram study to students and asked them to identify who they felt was responsible for the harm to the learner. The students blamed the experimenter rather than the participant and indicated that the responsibility was due to legitimate authority but also expert authority. Expert authority is pretty self-explanatory so it's when you trust the authority that someone has over you because they are more knowledgeable in this area of research. So in Milgram's study, the experimenter was in charge. He was the one that was running the whole thing. So he had that expert authority over the participants. This matters because it shows that there are findings from other studies that support the explanation, increasing its reliability. Reliability is all about consistency. So if the same results or similar results are shown over and over again in different studies, a theory is reliable because it is consistent. 
So that is all the knowledge that you need to know for legitimate authority and agentic state. So now, as I always do, I'll give you guys a couple of exam questions. You can either answer them in your head, write it down, or do whatever you think would benefit you most as part of your revision. So the first one is a two marker and it is outline what is meant by agentic state as an explanation for obedience. So pause the video, give yourself a couple minutes to think about it, write your answer, and then we will go through the mark scheme. So possible content that you could include for this question includes when a person acts on behalf of an authority figure or person of high status, and the actor or agent feels no personal responsibility and doesn't feel guilty. And it is the opposite of an autonomous state in which people act according to their own principles. So now we move on to our eight marker, looking at legitimacy of authority as an explanation for obedience. So give yourself a few minutes, do a plan, write the answer out, whatever is best for you, and then we'll go through the mark scheme. So the way the marks are split up for an, this eight marker, your A01 is worth three marks and your evaluations are worth five marks. So you can have one really, really good evaluation, which is very detailed, or you can have two that are a bit smaller. Possible content you could include for your A01 is when a person recognises their own and other's position in a social hierarchy, leading to recognition of the authority's figure right to issue a demand, how legitimacy is increased by visible symbols of authority, such as uniform, the legitimacy of setting, order and system, and you can bring in relevant evidence, such as variations of Milgram, like Bickman. This is why I recommended you make yourself familiar with Milgram's content because it's very interlinked with this explanation. Then for your evaluations, you could talk about evidence to support or contradict the explanations, use of real life examples to illustrate them, such as the Miley massacre. You could mention how the explanation cannot account for rates of disobedience in studies how obedience may be dispositional, not situational, such as authoritarian personality, which we'll move on to in a different video. Discussion of difficulty measuring and slash or explaining why obedience occurs. And cultural differences in respect for and responses to authority. So I hope you guys have found this video useful. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll be back again soon with another video. Bye.